So this is our quadrature encoder uh, that we have, and it's actually a combination of a uh, gear, and then here's the motor, and then it goes to a gearbox, 135.5 to 1 ratio. And so this is what we're trying to set the speed right here. Uh, the quadrature encoder only gives us 16 pulses per revolution, but we're not concerned with how fast the motors run. We're concerned with how fast the gear shaft is working. Right. So uh, what we do is we take uh, 16 times 135.5, and that gives us 2100. So what that means is we get 2100 pulses per revolution that we have to deal with. And we've got this up on our oscilloscope. So depending on what you want to do, uh, these are the formulas. So first of all, uh, we have to take time and convert it to frequency. Frequency and time are exactly opposite of each other. So uh, unfortunately, well, it's not unfortunately, a oscilloscope measures time, right? You understand that. But speed is in frequency. How many times do you have per revolution? We call them. In fact, we call it, uh, what, what do we rate speed in? What do we, yeah, revolutions per minute. And this is, you know, this is, this is a, a universal measurement of speed all over the world. Uh, speed of rotation, not speed of a car. You know, of course, we're on miles per hour and uh, all the rest of the world is on kilometers, yeah. <laughs> Well, not all the rest of the world. I think it's only two or three countries that use miles per hour now. Uh, so we're dealing with what we call cycles. A cycle is one repetition. So we're getting pulses out of here, and they're uh, they're occurring. And some of y'all that said AC will understand this because uh, Alabama Power or TVA generates a, a, what we call a sine wave, and it occurs in cycles. Uh, but a, a cycle would be one repetition of a, a waveform that's constantly repeating. And you measure uh, uh, these uh, pulse waveforms are real easy because what you what you do is you either go from from rising edge to rising edge or falling edge to falling edge, and it would give you the same time. And um, and we refer to this time as the period. which is the time for one cycle. And then the cycles are going to be, if it's a repetitive waveform, the, the cycles are going to be occurring at a certain rate. And we refer to that as frequency. And this is basically the number of cycles per second. And it could be rated. It could be rated in CPS, but we usually don't do that. Usually, it's rated in a unit called hertz. Yeah, and we abbreviate it uppercase H, lowercase Z. So Alabama Power and TVA. The, the frequency of AC here in the United States is 60 cycles per second, or 60 hertz. The problem we have is that most oscilloscopes, the new ones will do it for you, but most of the oscilloscopes measure this. These guys are these guys are inversely proportional. Anytime we use term inversely inversely proportional, it means we can go between the two by taking what we call the reciprocal, which is all one divided by a number. So it means if I want to know if I can measure the period. Then I can take one over the time, which would be the period, and this would give me the frequency. Or if I know the period, uh, if I know the, I'm sorry, this would be the frequency. If I know the, the frequency, then I can take one over, uh, I'm sorry, uh, period would be one over the frequency. So they are what we call inverse portion. So if frequency goes up, then the time for each cycle has to go down, right? You understand that? 
Uh, so what our scope does is our scope measures time, but we're concerned with frequency, revolutions per minute, not how fast the revolutions are going, right? So what we need to do right off the bat is uh, we need to go from time to frequency. That makes sense? Okay. But we got to go time, instead of time, we need to go time per revolution. So... I'm sorry. Yeah, this is what we're gonna. We know this one. This is what our scope measures. So our scope measures time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the time per one pulse, right? You understand that? We need to know the time. How many pulses we get in a minute, right? You understand? So what would we? I mean, how many pulses we get per revolution? Uh, so we're gonna use uh, time. Uh, then uh, times 2100. Everybody okay with that? And then we're going to take the reciprocal of that. And what we've just done is taken time for one revolution to the rate of the time, right? Does that make sense? And this is still uh, revolutions per second. So what would we have to do to get revolutions per minute? Now multiply this answer times 60. Good. And this will give us RPM. So RPM would be equal to one over time uh, time uh, times 2100. And then when we get through with this, we can uh, multiply this times 60, and then that should give us the frequency, right? Everybody okay there? So I don't know what we came up with the other day, but uh, I think we had it upside down. Uh, you could go ahead and take the reciprocal of of 2100. Y'all can go ahead and do that. I, I'll bring up the formulas. Uh, so this is the one uh, we're going to use right here. Uh, what you could go ahead and you take the, the reciprocal of 2100 and multiply it by 60, and you'll come up with this fraction. So this would be one of those things that if you do it all the time, this is probably what you are. If you did it with a programmable controller, this is what you would do. Uh, you would just do it with one math formula. So we, we, the way you want to do it, you can take, but this one would be a number that you would have to memorize. Uh, this would be something, uh, hopefully that makes sense. So we're coming over here and uh, let me bring up my camera. And I tried to set it uh, on a time. Hopefully my camera lets me get out of this. <laughs> and we'll turn the motor on. Okay. Looks like I need to clean my lens. Right? I think I made it worse with my fingers. Oh, there we go. We got it on 100 microseconds per division. And then we're measuring one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six divisions. So what time would that be? Six. Yeah. So that'd be how many? That's easy. Six hundred microseconds, right? And then what would we do? We'd take the six hundred microseconds, we'll multiply it times twenty one hundred, right? Everybody okay? And then you do what? Or take the reciprocal of your answer. Don't divide it by one. Divide it into one. Or take the reciprocal. Uh, we do the reciprocal so often because it always gives us the inverse, right? You understand that? That just about every scientific calculator I know of has a reciprocal key over there some way. It's going to be labeled. It's either going to be 1 over x or it's going to be x to the minus 1. Anytime you raise the power to the minus 1 power, you're taking the reciprocal of it. So I don't know which way your key is measured. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's figure out. Let's see. Oh, there will be one of these on test. Just one. <laughs> Just one. If I remember right. Nah, probably not. I don't, I don't usually get the 10 point bonuses. I'm not saying it is. I think it is. 
So what we got then? So we go uh, forty-seven point six. Everybody okay? So these are different ways uh, we could, we've got this one, um, but here we'd have to know the frequency. The scope doesn't give us the frequency, but if I knew the frequency, I could do that. So this is, uh, we know we know time. We know the 2100, right? You understand that? So we take the time, which was what? 600 microseconds. Yeah, 600 micro uh, times 2100, and then you'd find you're either going to take your 1 over x key or your what? x to the minus 1, then you'll hit what? Equals, and then you're going to say times 60. Forty-seven point six. That sounds about right. It's going to be hard to say, huh? Forty-seven point six. Okay. Of course, it's going to be it's going to be hard to get the point six, but we can see how our math works. We can get a pretty good idea. So I got my timer uh, set on thirty seconds, which would be half. So we should count about what twenty three revolutions. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. We just went off. So pretty good, pretty good math, guys. So if we had a computer, uh, we could do this. We got two. We got two options. Uh, a lot of times, what we can do is we can literally uh, set up a counter, and then we could count for we could count for like ten seconds on a PLC. And then we can multiply that by 60, right? So it all, all depends. Uh, yeah, because if I count it for 10 seconds, I multiply by six, I'm sorry. We wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, count for one minute because it would, that means your, your speed display would only have update every what? Only update one minute. 2100 revolutions though, we could, we could, uh, you know, get a really good count by counting very, a very short amount of time for this encoder. You want to do another one? So let's change the speed. So I'm going to come up here and speed it up some. I don't know what's happening. I think I'm hitting something. Let's slow it down. And we'll move it over. So here we go. <laughs> That's about the same. Let's slow it down some more. What am I doing? I know I'm right. Here we go. So let's speed it up. So this is 50 revolutions. Uh, this is five, 50 microseconds per division. 
I have seven and a half. Yeah, you go left. You always go left. Time on the telescope always goes left to right. And this is fifty microseconds. It's kind of blurred out because I got it so bright. Fifty microseconds for every region. Let's say it's got a fast pay, but it might be right. It's running pretty fast. I'm not going to count them. We're not gonna... 76 sounds about right to me. Huh. Yeah. for me. Real fast. So we got 7.5 times 50 microseconds, right? So what did we come up with? 7.5, that's how many divisions times 50 microseconds. What did we get? There are 75 microseconds. So we're going to go uh, 375 times 2100 and then what we're going to do is then we're going to do what then you're going to use your reciprocal key on your calculator it's going to be one over x or it's going to be what x to the minus one those are the same thing and then you're going to have to hit the what the equal key right and then you're going to say what times 60. huh yeah, because that we're, this is this is revolutions per second, and this would be revolutions per minute. Or you could say zero point two eight six divided by two hundred seventy five micro three hundred seventy five micro, and that should give you the same answer. A yeah, point oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's going to give you the wrong answer. Well, then you're going to be off quite a bit. Yeah. It is multiple choice. But you could say, okay. I round it and it's going to be lower than what I thought it was going to be. Right. So yeah, if you can get it that close, you should be able to pick, still pick the right answer. What's that? Okay, okay. Yes, no. That's uh this this test this question actually came off the Siemens level one test, by the way. Let's 
the, the problem. This problem came off one of the Siemens level one tests. You're doing fluid power. You're taking uh, pneumatics this time. Oh, really? Okay. Do y'all get are y'all able to use a formula sheet in it? Yeah. 